On this episode of Heartbeats, Teresa's severe diabetes puts her pregnancy at high risk. I think I'm doing good, and then I test, and it's like high. Let's try and fool the baby that mum doesn't have diabetes. And Francine struggles with crippling hand pain. Well, like any other surgery, there's common risks of infection, painful scars, numbness around scars. Earlier, I felt a little nervous. Now I'm starting to have butterflies. Teresa and Jim Fleming have been married just a year and are anxious to start a family. Teresa is now 18 weeks pregnant with their first child, but the baby's life may be in danger. I'm 30 years old and I've been a diabetic for 27 years. These elevators over here, to the third floor. Being pregnant is uh, high risk because of my diabetes. Uh, there's many things that we have to be careful of, such as uh, spina bifida, um, heart problems, Thanks. loss of limbs. Teresa's diabetes means she and her baby will be closely monitored by Sunnybrook and women's high-risk pregnancy team, led by her obstetrician gynecologist, Hani Akuri. Teresa has diabetes, which is insulin-dependent diabetes. That puts her automatically at more risk of complications. The diabetes may have influenced other organs in her body. Typically, it the eyes, the heart, and the kidneys. She can go into coma and or seizures, and the baby can have a fetal, sort of a fetal distress-like scenario. And if it's severe enough, it can cause fetal demise. Look at my blood sugars. Uh, they've been a little high lately, but they say in the second trimester, that could happen. At the best of times, Teresa has struggled to keep her blood sugar levels stable. Now, with pregnancy, she'll have to record her levels almost every waking hour. My blood sugars affect what happens to the baby. So if my blood sugars are high all the time, it means the baby will grow quicker and faster, may not develop the way we want. If the baby is large, there's increased risk of birth damage or trauma during that time of delivery. When diabetics like Teresa get pregnant, their insulin demands grow in alarming ways they've never before experienced. They need specialists like Anne Kenshaw to help them keep on track. So how are you doing? Not bad. Um, how are you feeling? I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Can we look at your book? If you remember, the fasting blood sugar goes down as yeah. pregnancy progresses. So those are okay. You're overnight. What's the one that leads up to breakfast right now? 4 a.m. till 7 a.m. is 1.3. Let's start the day not quite so low. So the tight blood sugar control is to provide as normal as possible an environment for that developing baby. Let's try and fool the baby that mum doesn't have diabetes. About five years ago, I guess, she put me on the insulin pump, and the pump has been great. The pump doesn't have a mind of its own. No. So maybe watch the, the size of the, the, <coughs> the portions a bit as well. It's an awful lot of hard work, right? Uh -huh. How are you coping with it? I don't know, sometimes I get frustrated with blood sugars, but yeah. I think I've gotten a lot That's better than what I used to be. Yes, yeah. We had a really bad morning. I don't oh, know when just... that was. My blood sugar was low, it was like 2.3. There was something different about her. People's behavior can be really quite bizarre it on was. occasion. Right. It was very bizarre. Right. I just heard her like yelling and stuff, like yes. incoherent, like yes. I didn't understand what yes. she was saying. If you have Blood sugar like swings that, can have a significant effect yeah. on a diabetic's yeah. mood. For a mother-to-be, these swings could dramatically alter the normal course of a baby's development. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Francine Johnston is a self-employed medical business planner whose work is almost at a standstill. Day after day, she endures the diminishing use of her right hand. I've been uh, diagnosed with osteoarthritis 
simple tasks that you take for granted, i.e. cutting vegetables, holding a book, just the weight of the book, holding a magazine, especially at work even worse because holding a pan, the narrow portion of a pan becomes very uh, difficult to hold. I've tried uh, different medication, obviously. We've tried the uh, other alternative first, uh, but unfortunately it got to a point where I just can't ignore it any longer and I, surgery is definitely needed at this point. My brother and I both have been helping her out as much as we can uh, uh, with, with various chores that otherwise would, would, one would consider to be simple. Now, after nine months of waiting, Francine is just hours away from innovative but risky surgery that might put her life back on course. I'm a little nervous. I think uh, anybody that goes through surgery is a little nervous. Back this up at the back. <laughs> Francine's doctor is plastic surgeon Paul Binhammer, who's performed over 100 of the microsurgeries she'll need to heal her pain. So she has um, osteoarthritis of the thumb metacarpal. That's this bone right here and her arthritis is here at what's called the CMC joint. So what we're going to do today is remove the arthritis and we use a spare tendon that she has to act as a cushion in place of the arthritic bone. It takes patients roughly about three months till they come back to the office and they say, you know what, feels great. So 10 days, then off, then okay, another oh, three, four days. Right, my, uh, then start my, uh, exercise. Oh, yeah. oh. Hmm. okay. Normal pregnancies usually involve close to 15 medical appointments. By the time Teresa delivers, she'll have attended more than 50. And today's in particular is critical. It's a check to see if her diabetes has already hurt the baby's development. Um, I have a level two ultrasound. So they're gonna check the limbs, make sure they're growing properly, the spine, um, heart problems. That's your Yes. So you can see the skull here, mm -hmm. the lip, and the nostrils here, like this. nasal bones, and the jaw. Like, can you tell that that's the baby's profile? Yeah. The back top baby. jaw, the bottom jaw, the this is the abdomen, the chest, and the abdomen, and this the blob there is part of the arm. Teresa is anxious to know that her baby is okay, but she'll have to wait until Dr. Akuri can do a careful analysis of the ultrasound. Francine could have had her surgery done under local anesthetic, but she's afraid of needles and the pain, so she's opted for a general anesthetic. And that's always a more dangerous so, route. Have you ever had an anesthetic before? Yes. Okay, what have you had? I have my couple of requests for you. Oh, I see. One, no mask. Okay. Anything intravenous, no problem, no mask. Two, um, I want to make sure that I'm not aware of what's happening during the operation. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, you said you've had anesthetics before. Yeah. For what? The, the last one that I've had was for dental uh, surgery. Right. And, uh, and that was fine. Uh, ever had any problems with your heart? No. Blood pressure? No. Breathing no. problems? No. Okay. No mask. No mask. No, no aware. You got it. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's get the room ready. Okay. Okay. Earlier I felt a little nervous, now I'm starting to have butterflies. <laughs> so there's a little one grade up right now. I've had surgeries before, but this one is a particularly uh, major one for me. Oh, I'm going now? Very soon. Very soon. You'll be off to sleep before you even know. Nice big breaths and you'll walk to sleep right Are you okay? Mm-hmm. We'll take very good care of you. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, yeah, I'm... Well... Yeah. Teresha's done all her homework on diabetic pregnancies, but now at 26 weeks, she and her baby are threatened by escalating sugar levels. Last week, actually, Dr. Akuri and Dr. Kenshel were both really concerned. Um, Dr. Kenshel's usually, you know, go with the flow kind of lady, but uh, I got in trouble last week. Uh, I'm a little nervous to hear that maybe things aren't going as I thought they were, because it could mean that I'd have to take a week off work or maybe even be hospitalized. My blood sugar was 14.3, uh, so it's a little high right now because I'm a little stressed. Hi. Hi. So the measurements were done in, in uh, your ultrasound. They're all fine. Okay. 
Your baby is above average. What are you doing? <laughs> this is the average curve. Okay. And the baby is lying above the average here. Okay. If it's too big, sometimes the shoulders can get stuck. That can be a problem. Mm -hmm. We'll see that when you get closer to your due date. How is the diabetes going? We're working on it. That's from last week, last Thursday when I was here. This morning it was high. Yeah. And I'm just getting yeah. frustrated now. You know, the odd one is okay. Yeah. But... Well, from now on, it's a matter of controlling the sugar. So let's keep it as probably tightly controlled as we can. Okay. Good. Some days are good. Other days, I really have to work at it. Teresa is pregnant and a lifelong diabetic. Her condition could gravely affect the development of her baby. It's already affected Teresa's eyesight. She's had surgeries in the past and hopes she won't need any more. I have renopathy and neuropathy in my left eye, which is a diabetic disease that does affect you when you've had diabetes for a long, long period of time. Well, I've had uh, five laser surgeries on my left eye and two open surgeries, uh, which treated me from going blind with pregnancy, increased sugar demands can diminish blood flow to the eye, increasing the danger to Teresa's eyesight. Today, she needs to find out how her eyes are before the pregnancy progresses much further. Okay, any problems, anything that you've noticed? My blood sugars were a little high the past couple of weeks, so we've adjusted my insulin pump to give myself more boluses and basils. So, and that looks like it's coming back down to normal. Okay, let's have a look at the forehead right up close and just look straight ahead. Just look at my ear. Mm -hmm. And look way up high. Great, you can sit back. <coughs> we did these ahead of time the looking for damage. Yeah. yeah, so that's what this is. You can see the nerve that connects the eye to the brain. Uh, these are the normal blood vessels in the eye. The darker, thicker ones are the veins, and these lighter colored ones are the arteries. And this is the center part of her vision. And you can see going over to the other eye where she's had previous problems a number of years ago from diabetes. Again, here's the nerve. Uh, the blood vessels are much narrower on this side. She's had a little bit of residual scar tissue here and here. And you can see all these faint little spots and scars which represents the laser treatment that she's had before. You'll notice when you're not pregnant, your sugars are gonna rebalance. You may have some intermittent blur, but any drastic or persistent changes, just call and let me know. Definitely. You've done great. Well, thank you. Very relieved. Everything's going good. Mm -hmm. So, as she says, you know, there shouldn't be any complications now. So, we just wait until after the baby's born and then come back again in July. Osteoarthritis is a disease commonly thought to afflict older people, but it can hit younger women like Francine. Treating it with surgery at any age can cause serious nerve damage. Well, like any other surgery, there's common risks of infection, painful scars, numbness around scars. So um, what I'm doing now is peeling off the layers around the arthritic joint. Dr. Binhammer has two tasks. He'll need first to remove the damaged bone. Then he'll have to create a new cushion for the bones out of a spare tendon in Francine's arm. So now what we've done is cut that tendon down in the forearm. Now it's gonna pop out down here. That's perfect. And a little irrigation. So the pain from the arthritis comes from the bone rubbing against the bone because she's lost the cartilage. Now there's no bone rubbing on bone, instead the bone is rubbing on this tendon spacer. It's, uh, this surgery hurts, so we try and uh, give the patients a fair amount of uh, long-acting freezing so they get some pain relief following the surgery. We're all done. I just need a wet sponge or a wet towel at the end. All right. The recovery is supposed to be approximately three months. Uh, I'm hoping it'll be shorter than that. I'm supposed to be in a cast, actually, but I'm not sure at this point how long the, the, uh, the, the splint itself will be on. The, the pain is quite, quite severe, actually, yeah. It's, uh, it's the pressure, and then I feel very numb in my fingers right now. Right. I feel pretty groggy right now, quite frankly. Yeah, well, that's okay. Just 
Francine's surgery is over, but she won't know how successful it is until her numbness is gone and physiotherapy can begin. Um, I think I'm glad it's over. It was a good experience. Now the challenge starts, and that's tomorrow, or even probably tonight, just with getting used to that. Teresa's in her third trimester, and her struggle to keep her blood sugar levels in check worsens. It could be affecting her baby. She'll need immediate reassurance from another member of her high-risk pregnancy team. Hi. Hi, Teresa. So we were able to make changes in your pump here. Yeah. Yeah, there was like a lock on it or something mm -hmm. for protection. So uh, where did you move that up to? Higher uh, I level? went from 1.3 to 2. It's been a little bit of playing around with it to try and, I mean, some of them are still a little high, mm -hmm. but I mean, they're a lot better than they were last week. Have you done your totaling of your days? Uh, That's when I increased it up to three units. So you're 85, and have you made any increases since then? The yeah. 27th, I did. At what time do you have dinner? Anywhere from 7 till 9, I... Nine o'clock. Is that after your dinner? I think that was just before dinner. As some days it works, and mm -hmm. some days it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So there's no logic right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll expect to see another total increase of your insulin over the next week of probably another 10 units. Okay. Okay. So we'll see you in two weeks. In the third trimester, you tend to either double or triple your insulin that you've been taking, which is kind of a little scary when you're used to taking 50 units a day, and you go up to 80, and they say you can still increase it up to 100 to 110. So, you know, I think I'm in every other diabetic shoes. You know, that's a lot of insulin. It's been a month since Francine had surgery to help regain use of her right hand. Now she's returned to hospital with her son James to find out if her pain and immobility will end. The first 48 hours was difficult. Uh, there was a lot of pain, but it's amazing new ways that you find of uh, doing things. How's your pain? I have a sharp pain though in here at times. Bend your fingers down, straighten all the way. Bend the end joint of your pain. Huh, that's that's good. So today, I'm gonna to get you to see the therapist, and in two weeks' time, you can remove your splint for all your normal light activities. What's light activities? You don't go shoveling around the garden. No rugby, no football, no basketball. Okay, so without, I can't do those no. sounds. Now we're gonna go around and see the therapist. I can leave this out? Yeah, you can leave it out. You can have a seat right over there. So I'd like just first to see how much movement you have. How far can you go with your thumb? <laughs> that's stiff. So you're that's at... Sore. That's sore. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some exercises. Okay, so move as far down as you can comfortably go. Oh. After you've done 10 of those, you're going to go this way. Just again, as far as you can comfortably go. Ooh. It's really hard actually to keep my hand even yeah, flat. Yeah, and, and you just go as far as you can go. Hold for five seconds. Next one. Actually, it's easier that way yeah. than it is flat. Yeah. And the last exercise that I want you to do is just making circles. Okay. So the focus right now is, is getting it mobile that? and getting the swelling down, and then you get more into lighter activities. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think Please. we're great to Thanks. go. Okay. I'm really looking forward to going home. Next week I've got an appointment, so they'll look at it, take this off, and then uh, more physio, and there we go again. Now that Francine has a timetable for physio, she'll soon be able to live again without pain. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Here's all the fun stuff. <laughs> Teresa's 36 weeks pregnant. High sugar levels have made the baby larger than average, so the chance of being induced before her due date is high. Today we're having an ultrasound done, um, and then hopefully I'll be able to find out when we're going to have this child. I kind of been uh, hoping that my due date would be, you know, around the 24th or 26th of March. Uh, just, I don't know if I just want to get it over with. <laughs> this ultrasound will help determine the baby's size. This baby's heartbeat. Oh, we need some movement here. But there's a problem. Can you call for me? <coughs> Maybe we 
message for me sitting up, okay? Ooh, feel that? No. Come on, Sydney. Let's go. We're going to do the non-stress test because the baby's not moving that much. You just want to make sure the baby wakes up. Okay, so we're going to monitor it a little bit longer. Okay, so we'll get you to go next door. I have to go find the lady this. The pink band, yes. all the, the monitors picking up the heart rate, and the blue one the, picks up the contraction. Just tell me that which is which. Okay. Did you research? Yeah. Have you been in the hospital with this pregnancy? No. <laughs> Though Jim is by her side, Teresa can't help feeling worried about her baby's status. Coming up, highlights from the next episode. On the next episode of Heartbeats, Teresa waits on news about the health of her baby and whether she'll have to deliver early. I'm a bit concerned because the head hasn't dropped where it should be. And Eileen learns whether or not she has breast cancer. Hello. Hi, Ms. Wilson. I really am hoping that it's just something that has to be removed and I can go on with life. It would be nice.